What's up everyone, it's Edwin. Whoa, I know it's been a while since I posted, but you know what, it's been even longer since we talked about the ant word. So I figured let's bring back my most requested series and talk about this lawsuit that they got into with BMG. Hmm. So it's been over two years now, over two years since my last video on the ant word. And as it turns out, while I was first doing the series on them back in 2019, they were negotiating a contract with BMG to distribute their final album. And you know, everything was actually going in their favor. They were about to onboard with BMG, that actually even signed a contract, until BMG decided to pull out kinda last minute. Ooh. Now this did not sit well with Ninja and Yolandi, especially because the contract had promised them a monetary advance. So they decided to sue BMG for $1 million, which left BMG thinking, do you know who you're messing with? We are a major record label. We are not going down without a fight. And instead of taking home $1 million, the Antwerp took home an L. But why did BMG pull out of the contract in the first place? And how does the Antwerp keep catching so many L's? Well, apparently, BMG discovered videos of the Antwerp engaging in racist, homophobic, and violent acts. Yeah, sounds familiar. BMG alleges that these videos were known to the group prior to the execution of the agreement and they did not disclose the existence of the videos despite an obligation to do so. So let me get this straight, you mean to tell me that when you sign a contract with a major record label whose job is to publish, distribute and essentially promote your music, you're meant to tell them about any controversies that may inhibit them from doing their job? Well, color me surprised! Now, the Antwerp's opposition is that BMG should have performed due diligence prior to executing the agreement, also stating that the videos described were public before the agreement was executed and they had no obligation to disclose public information. However, the court still sided with BMG because the videos were filmed by Benjay, who was employed by Zef, aka the Antwerp. And not only that, but Yolandi also had a phone call with Benjay during the midst of all the controversy. No, and I know you're probably gonna post this on your Instagram or whatever it is you can. So, not only did the Antwerp know about these videos before, before they were gonna come out, but it's also silly to say you should know about it, it's public information, when the videos had not really gained traction during the time of the negotiations. I'd also like to point out just how ridiculous it sounds for Deantwoord to say, it was public information, you should have done your homework, when they literally strike down Benjay's upload of them trying to cover up their attack against Hercules and Love Affair. That's the reason why I titled my coverage on it, the video that Deantwoord doesn't want you to see. Little did I know, they actually just didn't want BMG to see it, maybe so they could get an upper hand on this lawsuit, but now it all all makes sense. So apparently, BMG came across one of the videos just one day after exchanging signatures on the contract. And on that same day, BMG sought but did not receive an explanation from Zef about the video. So basically, the Antwoord were called to the principal's office <laughs> and they didn't show up. And by the following day, August 14, 2019, Zef knew that BMG could not move forward with the agreement as a result of the video. So here it sounds like BMG is asserting that the Antwerp knew the deal was off because they had nothing to say for themselves in regards to the video, you know, at least at that time, because one day wasn't fast enough for them to come up with an explanation. As you may recall, Ninja did eventually respond to the situation through a Facebook post and geez, this lawsuit now feels like the incentive for him to do it in such a desperate and tacky way. I mean, he literally blamed Benjay for clever editing and tried to say that he was the one that did the assault. As for Ninja saying that Ben cleverly edited the video that he posted, I'm about to say something really bold right here. Ninja's lying. <laughs> Unless, of course, you consider dragging and dropping files into a sequence in a chronological order clever, then yeah, I, I guess Ben is real clever. <laughs> I have the raw files, Ninja. There is no clever editing being done here. Stop it. <laughs> Zef also fails to address the fact that in the wake of the videos' release, three of their scheduled festival appearances in September of 2019 were cancelled. BMG's being clever here. They're saying, obviously, we need an explanation if just after the video comes out, festivals are being cancelled left and right. Oh, and from the North American tour, scheduled to span from August through October of 2019, approximately 8 shows were cancelled and the other 12 were postponed until 2020. See, I told you, BMG is not playing around, they'll rub salt on that wound. Which by the way, those postponed tour dates were eventually cancelled. They have not come to the States, at least for touring. North American tour! So much for that VIP experiences where people get to smoke with them and drink champagne. Some champs and fucking weed, the whole fucking thing. Wearing all black. I can't believe it. You have to dress in black. Yeah. By the way, almost all of the Antwerp's responses to the counterclaims look the same. For example, for the first paragraph it says, Zef admits that Ninja and Yolandi are members of the Antwerp and you know, they were gonna be a part of the contract, etc, etc. 
and then they say, well, we deny anything that is inconsistent. The court can decide. Zeff knew about, but failed to disclose to BMG during the parties' negotiations, the events captured by the videos and the videos themselves, any part of which, if known to BMG, would have caused BMG to terminate the negotiations immediately and refuse to sign the agreement. Zeff also knew that BMG was unaware of either and would not have signed the agreement if they had known. I gotta say, I don't like the way that BMG phrases the whole Zeff knew that BMG would never sign an agreement if those videos were shown to us. But then again, I also don't like Zeph's response because it's even weaker. It's like, to the extent that paragraph two contains legal conclusions, no response by Zeph is required. That response in itself feels like they're damning themselves, saying, I plead the fifth. I don't have to respond and therefore I won't because if I do, it may have a legal conclusion against my favor. Because there's two routes to all this. Either Zeph knew because it was a clause in a contract or <laughs> BMG are mind readers, right? Which is silly. But the Antwerp did, again, take down the video upload and take down on several re-uploads as well. So, you know, part of them did not want that video to be online. So it is likely that they did know. And they're looking quite weak in this response. Also, the second sentence says they deny the remaining allegations in paragraph two, which I'm about to read to you. Even though Zeph's superior knowledge about these matters required Zeph to disclose them to BMG, Zeph, upon information and belief, chose not to in order to induce BMG into executing the contract. This is a case despite Zeph having information that the group's former cameraman was preparing to release or did release the videos. Just like their efforts to keep BMG in the dark about the events and videos in question during the negotiations, Zeph has studiously avoided any mention of them before this court in an effort to obtain a $1 million windfall to which it is not entitled. Okay, the fact that DeAntwoord took BMG to court and they're being pressed on, hey, why don't you talk about those videos, huh? Why don't you talk about what you and Yolandi did to that gay man and then got him kicked off of the tour and then covered it up? And what do they say in response? We deny the allegation that we studiously avoided any mention of the other allegation. <laughs> this is drama, nigga. We can get some of the fact of the matter is that whether Ninja and Yolandi actually engaged in the racist, homophobic, and violent behavior that the videos appear to show, and BMG does not know if they did, the videos made any relationship between the parties untenable. So to me, this part reads kind of performative, like BMG doesn't have an actual firm stance on the things they witnessed from the Antwoord that led them to want to cut ties with them, right? I mean, BMG is basically saying here, regardless of whether you did what those videos appear to show you doing, because we don't know, we don't know if you did what's in the videos, we can't be friends. We can't be friends with those videos out in the public. Watch yourself before you zeph yourself. It just comes off really performative, especially because of this next line. In addition to being anathema to BMG's core values, anathema, never heard of that word before, apparently means something or someone that one vehemently dislikes. Ooh, okay. So what you witnessed is against your core values, but you can't take a firm stance and call it what it is. <laughs> okay, or... I know it's legalese, guys. I know it's like, you know, they're just speaking as careful as possible, probably but there's something else that's coming up. In addition to being anathema to BMG's core values, the nature of the wrongdoing at issue destroyed the group's standing in the marketplace. Dog, the Antwoord came into this looking for $1 million, and instead they come out with a major record label, telling them that they have destroyed themselves in the marketplace. That is not gonna look good on their resume. But hey, good thing it was supposed to be their final album, right? And with that, any reasonable possibility that BMG would ever realize any profit, let alone recoup the significant advances required under the agreement. Oof, BMG said, how are we supposed to pay you in advance when you're not even gonna make us half of the advance that you're asking for? BMG therefore seeks rescission of the agreement and other remedies as redress for Zeph's fraudulent inducement and in the alternative, damages for Zeph's breach of the implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing. In layman's terms, BMG wanted to make sure that the contract was completely revoked and they wanted remedies for being tricked into the contract and for Zeph being dishonest mother fudgers throughout the whole thing. All right, so around June of 2019, the Antwoord hired music consultant Livia Tortella to oversee marketing and promotion of its next album and suggested to BMG that it consider entering into an agreement to distribute their album. Immediately after receiving Tortella's suggestion, BMG researched the group's background and performed other due diligence to evaluate the group. Immediately after? Damn, BMG was thirsty for a new artists on the roster, huh? Or maybe they really trusted Tortella. <laughs> Either way, I'm sure that's a decision both parties might regret now. By the end of June 2019, BMG had concluded this process and decided to explore a business relationship with the group. Okay, so around late June, BMG was recommended the Antwoord, and by the end of the month, their due diligence research was over? Yeah, that, that feels a little rushed. It's hard to feel bad for BMG here. I mean, seriously, by June of 2019, they were already heavily engaging with the controversy with Johnny. And let's just be real here because it's been three years, right? They behaved like total fucking children. Hi, my name is Yolandi Fusser and, and I'm in a cult. 
literally involving children at one point. 16, are you okay? 16, are you okay? Are you okay? 16! Are you sure you're okay? Damn it! When? Damn it, 16. Jamil, are you okay, man? Jamil, are you okay, lad? It was crazy. Jesus Christ, man! Why do you backflip that up the water rock? water must have been crazy torture! And you know, maybe Johnny's claims were not strong enough for BMG, right? Maybe they're not against BMG's core values, right? They, they can look the other way for that. Forget the fact that BMG has a zero tolerance policy against human trafficking, and Johnny claimed that she was trafficked, used up, and tortured by Ninja. I guess we'll have to consider the possibility that BMG just didn't give a fuck about Johnny, right? But that's not the reason why I don't feel bad for BMG. The reason why I don't feel bad for BMG is because they literally saw how they responded to Johnny. They saw how they behaved, you know, the way that they incessantly kept using their social media to give this controversy more and more flame. And BMG still thought it was a good idea to go into business with these bozos expecting what? Professionals? Nah, you played yourself BMG because either you actually didn't do your due diligence and you feel stupid but you're just pretending because you gotta say you did, right? Or you did and you look stupid either way. Sorry BMG, have to give it to you straight. I guess in a way I'm playing lawyer for Zeph here but <laughs> you guys did bad research. <laughs> Can, did you understand everything we were saying? Yeah. Huh? Was that there? Niggas are gonna research. BMG's due diligence revealed no videos appearing to show Ninja or Yolandi using racist or homophobic epithets, making other racist or homophobic remarks, or carrying out a homophobic attack. Okay, so maybe if Johnny was a little bit more gay, BMG might have cared. Now, had BMG uncovered or otherwise learned of any such evidence, it never would have signed the agreement or pursued a business relationship with Zeph in the first place. <sighs> This is what I was talking about with BMG being performative. I mean, can we chill with the virtue signaling, please? We're talking about the antwoord here. Stop it with a, had we known, we would have never done business with them. Shut up, <laughs> shut up. They literally have slurs all over their songs. And what about this video? It comes across to us that some people from America are heavy sensitive about the use of certain words. We're not from America. We're from South Africa. Like for instance, in South Africa, a white guy will say to a black guy, yo, what's up, my nigga? And the black guy will be like, Hey, what's up, my nigga? Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> on or about June 26, 2019, Tortella made a proposal to BMG on the group's behalf for BMG to distribute the group's next album and shortly thereafter put BMG in contact with Edward Shapiro, the group's transactional attorney. Throughout July, they negotiated. On August 6th, they finalized the contract. And on August 12th, Zeph's attorneys sent BMG a partially executed copy of the agreement. They did not include the IRS form W9 and ACH form necessary for BMG to effectuate payment. Are you kidding me? You're telling me that they were this close to getting paid, but they never even provided their W-9 and ACH forms? Oh my God, bro, you're suing. Why? Why are you suing? You could have never gotten paid in the first place. They didn't submit their tax forms. Of course they weren't gonna get paid. Now, one has to wonder, why didn't they submit their tax forms? It'd be kind of comical if they were trying to see if they could get away with not getting taxed on that advanced payment, you know? Especially considering that they have an offshore shell company in the British Virgin Islands. A place where you don't get taxed. Or maybe they're just dumb and didn't think they had to submit their tax forms. At 3.28 on August 12th, BMG's representatives sent Zeph's attorneys and other representatives a fully executed copy of the agreement and noted that BMG still had not received the IRS Form W-9 and ACH form. Oh, come on. BMG literally reminded them to send in their tax forms, and they still didn't. During the morning of August 13th, approximately six weeks after BMG had completed its due diligence and decided to move forward with its negotiations with the group, BMG discovered a YouTube video posted approximately one week earlier purporting to depict the group using racial slurs and other racially charged and inappropriate language, including the repeated use of the N-word and referring to an Asian American fashion designer as, among other things, a fucking weird little pixie fucking oriental motherfucking psycho. This is kind of wild because Zef had literally seven days, a whole week, to turn in the appropriate forms in order to get paid, but they didn't. And that must have been the most painful missed opportunity because, you know, missing that advance payment is essentially the reason why they're suing in the first place. At least from what it sounds like, BMG was willing and ready to pay them until the eighth day when they began to find certain videos. Ninja's more like a nigga than <laughs> and I'm even willing to bet that had BMG paid out the advance, the ant would would have been satisfied if like they got cut off from the contract because at least they got their fat paycheck, you know? And it would have probably been a lot more difficult for BMG to get that paycheck back too. And I'm not saying that because the ant would have put that money in that offshore shell company they have, 
but that would have been a clever thing and I wouldn't put it past them. BMG also discovered an article from the South Africa based newspaper The Citizen titled The Antwoord and Storm Over K Word and Bombs Calling Whitney Houston Crack Whore Bitch and says that Zeph also did not bring this up and had they known, they immediately would have terminated their negotiations. BMG, as a collective, like the entire company, everybody in it, they're going to heaven. They're really good people. Later that day, BMG sent Zev's attorneys an email notifying them that they were concerned about these recent controversies surrounding the Antwoord, including the video footage that had just surfaced. The email went to say that BMG would very much like to give the artist the opportunity to air their response, it seems only fair, and suggested that a call be set up between management and the head of BMG's global repertoire and marketing. Zeph's attorneys responded shortly thereafter in an email stating, sure, we can do that, but they have been dealing with an incredibly toxic individual who sells herself for sex and another who is deranged and destitute, both of which have decided the only way to get ahead in life is to slander and defame their client. Usually I read something and I'm like, okay, I want to react to this and I know what to say, right? But to this, I don't even know what to say because this is so incredibly mind-numbing. The Antwoord's attorneys are like, we've been dealing with an incredibly toxic individual who sells herself. Dude, do you know who you're representing? Oh my God, these attorneys. Oh my. I mean, I guess you gotta be stupid to represent the Antwoord, right? <laughs> but instead of addressing BMG's concerns, they decided to sideswipe Johnny, which BMG already showed that they don't care about her. You know, they, they didn't bring her up. She wasn't controversial enough to make the Antwoord unmarketable, right? But they sideswiped her anyway. It's a all right, maybe I'm being too harsh on the lawyers representing the Antwoord in this case. I don't think they're stupid. I think that maybe the money that were being paid made them believe the dumb things that they were saying. So I wanna apologize to Jordan, Ian, John, and whoever else was representing the Antwoord. If you're watching this video, I apologize. I just think you're money driven, okay? And if I'm wrong, prove me wrong. Talk to me about how they were defaming your clients. Okay, let's talk about it without money in the way. The email concluded by asking BMG if Zef should line up another distribution partner. <laughs> you wanna know the best part about this, the spoiler alert. They never found another distribution partner. The ants were trying to play the power card. They tried to say, we don't need you, but we need the dinero. Please, give me some dinero. On August 14th, 2019, Tortella informed the BMG representative that the agreement is dead according to Shapiro. Did the ants would really think they could win this case? Because all the cards seem to be stacked against them. Maybe they just hoped that BMG would just want to settle out of court, you know, maybe not give them the full one million dollars, but give them something. I mean, BMG is literally ready to use the Antwoord's own lawyer, Edward Shapiro, against their other lawyers. What a mess. Apart from the Zef August 13th response, which on its face did not address the substance of the remarks captured in the August 2019th video, neither Zef nor the group made any attempt to discuss the controversy surrounding the video with BMG or assuage BMG's concerns about it. But BMG, aren't you subscribed to DeAntwoord's YouTube channel? Because they address a lot of things in their little Zef TV miniseries. I mean, it's taken down now, so you can't really see it, but I wonder if that was like their way of addressing it indirectly to BMG. You shouldn't speak like that. It's bad. And I'm like sorry about like causing like a fucking bad vibration on for planet Earth. Eventually, the case was discontinued with prejudice, which means that the Antwoord can no longer pursue their $1 million dream. This ruling also includes that both parties had to pay for their own legal fees. However, if BMG wanted to, they could open up a whole new lawsuit against the Antwoord and go from there, but of course, that would be a waste of time. Sorry, BMG, but you weren't induced into a contract. Like lawyers say, upon information and belief, you knew what you were dealing with. I mean, because you said you did your due diligence, right? I wanted to cover this lawsuit with BMG as a way to reintroduce the series and start off light because the next video is definitely going to be on the heavier side. Also, this lawsuit allowed me to throw in some clips from some older videos and remind you guys of some of the Deantwoord lore since there's so much and, you know, those videos are already from almost three years ago. I, I was rewatching, I was like, dang, it's been a while and I even forgot some of the stuff I covered. There's, there's just so much. So if you have free time, I recommend rewatching the series. And if you've never seen it, it's your homework now. Go watch it. I think it's some of my best work. So what's coming up in the next video? We're going to be going over Benji's interview with Toki. That's right. Ninja Yolani's adopted son Toki has reached out to Benji and spoken up about how he felt exploited by Ninja Yolani. I wanted to come forward to let everyone know actually what happened to me and that everything that actually did happen in my life. I want to live my future like who I really am. So yeah. The video's already gotten a lot of attention. Apparently, a lot of TikTokers are talking about it, which is how you know I'm super late to this. And, you know, without getting into the personal stuff, guys, I just experienced a lot of burnout and it, it sucks, but I'm, I'm gonna really try. I'm gonna try to do this upcoming video within the next week and just have it up. 
You can tell from the face that I'm making right there how badly I want to come through with this video, but also how scared I am to fail. <laughs> All right, you guys know the drill. Give this video a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the next one. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being patient with me and continuing to support me. I hate to sound like I'm accepting some sort of award here, but like I, I just can't express it enough. And aside from me, thank you so much for supporting Toki, you know, whether it be on his interview with Benj or, or on his Instagram, you know, I know it means a lot to him because that interview is, is powerful and, it, and it's heavy when you watch it. It's sometimes hard to listen to. And that's all the reason why, you know, he needs the support. So if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend watching it. It's linked in the description down below and you can also tap it or click it, whatever, at the end of this video. All right. So thank you guys so much. And I'll try my hardest to deliver you guys a new video real soon. Cheers. Watch yourself before you zeph yourself. <laughs>